Hello, welcome to this NetIQ Aegis process example video, new user onboarding with service desk integration. The process scenario we're going to take a look at today is fairly straightforward and it takes a look at some of the activities that are undertaken by a typical organization when they bring a new employee uh, into their organization. Uh, these sorts of processes can be quite labor intensive, particularly in organizations where there are large numbers of staff or where there is a high staff turnover. So organizations that use lots of short-term contractors or seasonal workers and really the activities we're going to take a look at here is that you know a hiring manager submits a new user request maybe perhaps into the service desk something like that that then automatically creates a new service desk service request uh, when the process then continues, it does things that it looks at the asset database uh, for sort of software and hardware assets. And if assets are available, then they get assigned to the new user. If assets aren't available, then a purchasing department is, is notified to go through a purchasing process. Uh, following that, the user is created in Active Directory and is then assigned to the appropriate groups for that particular individual. And then a couple of emails are sent, so the account details are sent to the hiring manager so the hiring manager has all that information when their new employee starts and that then a welcome email is sent to the, uh, the new user welcoming them to, into the organization and giving them some key information that they need to be aware of. So let's take a look now at the uh, process itself. So we can see we've got a, a Word document which is the new user request that's been completed by the hiring manager. And in order to kick that process off, what the hiring manager needs to do is send an email. So in this case, we're, we're sending the, uh, uh, the email to a, a mailbox that is being watched by uh, Aegis. And so the hiring manager sends the email, gives it a subject line of new user request, and then what they do is they then attach the, uh, the user request form that they've completed. They attach that to the email, and then they then send the email uh, into Aegis itself. So what we can see here is a couple of queries we're running against a sample asset database that we've got and we can see that what we've got for software assets and also hardware assets we can see a couple of examples where there are software and hardware assets that are available they're not been assigned so they're available for reuse and we want to make sure we use those. So what we can see here is the Aegis operations console and these are the events that are coming into Aegis that can be used to trigger uh, particular processes and we can see we've got our email that's come in a new user request and what what Aegis will now do is, is use that email to trigger the new user onboarding process so we can see here we're just going to refresh this screen and we can see that a, a new process work item has been created for the new user onboarding process so what we're going to do is we're going to drill into that now and we can see some of the information we're going to populate later we're going to use within the process and if we drill into the workflow uh, itself this then enables us to see where are we within the process what activities have executed and what route are we taking through the process so we can see that it's triggered we've created a folder to save the the form and we're also we've also extracted that form uh, and we're now starting to read the the word document that it was attached and we can click here this will then give us a, a status of the uh, the current activity that's running and if I sort of scroll down and what I want to do is select view details over on the the left hand side here and I can see those process activities and what I can see is the text values there this is the information we've read from that form that we're then going to use uh, later on within the the process so what we're also we can also see that we're doing here is we're also executing a, a secondary post process to create a, a help desk ticket. And what we're going to take a look at now is the work item properties, and we can see that now that some of that information has been populated uh, from reading the uh, the Word document attachment. So let's just take a look at the. Um, 
the help desk ticket creation process so this has been called by our onboarding process and we can see we've passed some information across so the the call description the call subject uh, that we want to use and also some of the contact details for that uh, that service desk request and we can see that a number of the activities have uh, executed and now we're currently waiting for the uh, service desk to respond with a, a ticket ID that we can then use within the uh, onboarding process itself. So what we need to do is we'll, we'll take a look at the uh, events again that are, are coming into Aegis and we can see when that we've received that uh, ticket ID from the uh, the service desk itself and we can see that yes we have and we've got a ticket ID of, of 2048 so what we want to make sure now is that that ticket ID is recorded both against this particular process and also against the, the user onboarding uh, process as well so in here we we'll just wait for the screen to refresh and we can see that the the create ticket uh, process now has 2048 as the help desk call ID uh, assigned to it and if we flick back to our onboarding process we can refresh that and then if we scroll down to the bottom we can then see that 2048 has been assigned to this process as well so we could then use that to update tickets and notify people that that's their help desk ticket so what we're also doing now is we're starting to look at the asset database so we're starting to perform that query and say you know is there software available and hardware available for this user if there is we want to use that and we want to allocate it to the user here so if we go and look at our asset database again we can then see that uh, Mark Roberts the user we're creating there has been assigned both uh, software and, and hardware within the database and then as we scroll down to the bottom here we can see that the further activities so we can doing things like creating the the user account generating the password uh, we're assigning the individual to groups creating a email mailbox and also sending the uh, acknowledgement and welcome email so if we take a look in active directory users and computers now we'll refresh that and what we can see if we take a look is we can see that Mark Roberts the user that we're creating here has been uh, successfully created we'll take a look at the properties of that user we can see the email account has been uh, assigned and we can also see that there are standard users so they've been added to the uh, standard users group so if we now take a look at the uh, the service desk tool itself we can see we've got a, uh, a service desk request that's been created here we knew that was uh, ticket ID of, of 2048 so if we drill into ticket 2048 we can see the, the the problem and the description that's been added and if we take a look at the attachments at the bottom here we can also see that what we've done within Aegis is also pass the new user request form across to the service desk so there's a record of that within the, uh, the service request uh, itself And then if we look at the uh, the hiring manager's email here, we can see a couple of emails have been received. There was a, a request acknowledgement, and there's also a completion uh, email within there as well. And if we take a look at the uh, completion email, we can see the sort of information we've passed across to the hiring manager. So we're just notifying them it's complete, and we're also giving them the, the user account, the password, so the hiring manager has that information ready for when the, uh, the new user uh, starts employment, and we're also giving some further information about what might need to happen. Uh, later on when that user logs on and what's going to happen with the hardware and software so we can see now back within the Aegis operations console we can see that the uh, process has completed its execution and we can see there the work item has completed itself So I hope you found that demo useful. So for further information about Aegis, take a look at our website, www.netiq.com forward slash products forward slash Aegis.